Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters out there. How you doing? Welcome to a new week that the Lord has made. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Come on into the house. Your brother Tony is here. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Come on in, brothers and sisters. Don't sit in the back. Come close to the front. We got a whole lot of seats in the front, so you don't have to sit in the back. Come a little closer. Come a little closer. How you doing, sister? Flo Harvey Martin. I see you join Hancock Diner. How you doing, sister? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister, so we can get to this good content tonight. And again, welcome to the first day of the week that the Lord has made. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. So we can get it. So we can get it. So we can get it. Come on in, come on in, come on in. We're going to give a few more people an opportunity to come on in so we could jump into this content tonight. You will enjoy this show tonight, my brothers and sisters. Brothers, 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 and sisters, sisters, sisters. We got three reasons going on how God gives some men a wife and why... Sometimes men don't get a good wife, so we're going to talk about that right now, my brothers and sisters. A few more seconds, and we are about to blast out. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're here, we're here, we're here. How you doing, uh... Sister Val, how you doing? How you doing? Brothers and sisters, again, come on, come on in, come on in. If this is your first time looking at this particular broadcast, how you doing, Sister uh, Pamela P. Lowe? I say, yo, John Hancock down there too. If this is your first time looking at this particular broadcast, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship basically from a biblical perspective. When I say a biblical perspective, I'm talking about uh, God had a unique relationship with the man Adam. Then secondly, he had a unique re relationship with the woman Eve. He brought both of them together. And at that particular time, God said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. If you don't believe in that particular type of concept, my brother and sister, you have what is called a free will. You do what you choose to do. But I talk about the relationship between a man and a woman. How you doing, sister? Uh, Cheryl E. Smith. So let's get into this content tonight. Tonight's topic, my brothers and sisters, is titled Three Reasons Why God Give Some Men Good Wives. Again, Three Reasons Why God Give Some Men Good Wives. And some of you are all probably saying, Tony, what do you mean three reasons why God gives some men good wife? And the key word is some. We're about to get into that shortly. But let us go to God's word first. We're going to answer one question right off what might be coming to your mind when I say some men. What type of men are we talking about? We're going to go to the book of Psalm 3723. Psalm 3723. Psalm 37, 23, as it is written, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. So this is the type of man that we're talking about. We're talking about a good man. Again, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Thank you, Sister Cheryl Smith. Now, let me be clear, my brothers and sisters, according to the free dictionary, this is where I'm getting this little part from, according to the free dictionary, what is a wife? I know when we're talking about, when we look at the news and when we look at society, we see different uh, forms of relationships that say, Two men are a husband and wife, or two wives are husband and, and wife. But let's look at what the dictionary, what does the dictionary define as a wife? According to the dictionary, it say a woman joined in marriage to a man. That's what the dictionary is saying now. This is not what Tony's saying right now. The dictionary say a wife is a woman joined in marriage to a man and considered as his spouse. Just what the dictionary said. But more importantly, my brother and sister, from God's point of view, he has documented in his word, the Bible, 
what a wife is. As written in Genesis 1.27, that Genesis 1.27, Genesis 1.27, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. What is a male? And what is a female? We know that a male, when, and, it's, and it's easy to identify what a male and a female is. When, when a a baby first coming to the world, they look at the genital area, and if it's a penis, it's a it's a uh, a boy. If it's a, a vagina, it's a woman. I mean, a, a baby girl. So that's the distinct difference. A man has a penis, and a and a woman has a vagina. That's the distinct difference between the genders. Okay, but both man and woman have a soul, but their genders dictate what God created them to be. And at this particular point, my brother and sister, let me tell you all this. Whatever gender God gave to a man and a woman, that's the gender God wanted that man and woman to be. You understand that? When If God put a penis down there on a man, that's what he want that individual to be, a male. If he put a, a vagina down there, that's what God wanted to be. He wanted it to be a female. So we got that out of the way. Now, again, God created him male and female. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Who is them? The male and the female. He created them. For example, Adam was a male and Eve was a female. Now, according to Proverbs 19.14, Proverbs 19.14, Proverbs 19, 14. Keep in mind, tonight's topic is three reasons why God gives some men a good wife. Now, God gives some men a good wife, and that's a good man that follow after the Lord, and he uh, allow the Lord to order his step. Now, according again to Proverbs 19, 14, uh, it, said, it said houses and wealth. Listen to what I'm saying. It said houses and wealth are inherited from parents. But a prudent wife is from the Lord. Again, it said houses and wealth are inherited from parents. This is what a parent can pass down to their male child. But how does a good woman or a good wife come into the picture? A good woman or a good wife coming to the picture, it said, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now, some may say, Tony, well, what is a prudent wife? I'm glad you asked. Now, a prudent wife is an instructed wife. She comes into her marriage instructed and taught by the Holy Spirit. She's taught by the Holy Spirit. God's living eternal word and by godly older women who are walking in the truth. This is what a prudent woman is that it, uh, becomes a wife. Now, when a man follows God, my brother and sister, he will clearly understand another part of God's word. Now, in order for a man to understand God's word, you know he has to have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, how you doing, Sister Deborah Scott? Now, in Proverbs 3.15, Proverbs 3.15, again, Proverbs 3.15, it states, and as it is written, she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you can compare with her. This is talking about a good woman, a wife, a woman that's made and molded to be a wife. Again, it states from Proverbs 3.15, she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you can desire or could compare to her. So when a man gets a good wife, there's nothing that can compare to her. And once a man has this particular type of woman in his life, my brothers and sister, there's nothing, not even another woman will be able to measure up to this particular woman that God have tailor made for this man. And I'm not talking about a perfect woman. Don't get me wrong. A perfect... Um, a prudent woman, she's not perfect. So I'm not talking about a perfect woman, but I'm talking about a woman that's molded and particularly uh, made for that man. You understand? Now, 
Again, Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. So the Lord himself, when he looks down at a man, and not only does he look down from a man because he's sitting on the right hand of God, he looks down on a man and not only that, his spirit is, is on the inside of the man. So the Lord ordered this man's step. This man, his primary focus is on God first, okay? And then his second priority is when this man, when God brings a particular woman in his life, and if that, and God give that man uh, children, that's his his uh, third priority. So it's God first, his wife second, and his offspring third, and all other things, relationship, and everything give that come after the core uh, of his his uh, priorities. Now, why did God create? A woman for a man. We all know this, and we're gonna to go to Genesis 128. Genesis 128. Genesis 128. Now God created a woman for a particular reason. He created in God, in God's mind, He created a good woman for this. And we're gonna go back to the Garden of Eden when before Adam and Eve fell. It said in Genesis 128, Genesis 128, Genesis 128, it say that. And God blessed them. Who are we talking about? God blessed them, Adam and Eve. And when God had both Adam and Eve in front of them, when they were in their perfect state, he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now, God gave Adam a good wife. He did. He gave Adam a good wife in her perfect state, and Adam was in his perfect state, but God also gave them a free will. And we know the rest of the story. With that free will, they made um, a very, very crucial decision that affect us to this day. But did God give up all hope on, on mankind? No, he didn't. God and God in God's mind, he was already he had already came up with a with a redemption plan to restore a man and woman to have fellowship with him. Because if you notice, when Adam and Eve fell, God still made provision for them. And he covered them with skins. Because remember, Adam and Eve, they were trying to cover their bodies with leaves, okay? But God had to skin an animal, which means that some animal had to give her its life so God could cover Adam and Eve. So he still... He still uh, cared for that man and that woman like God cared for a man and woman as of today. Now, again, three reasons why God gives some men good wives and then sometimes he doesn't. Now, let me discuss this briefly, my brother and sister. And this is very, very important for some of you, especially some of you single sisters. Listen to me very carefully, some of you single uh, sisters. This is what I want you to know. Some of you single sisters, I don't want you to feel bad and I don't want you to feel sad because if you have a girlfriend and she gets married, I'm about to tell you what I'm talking about. If you got a girlfriend and you, my single sister, you desire to get ma uh, married, don't feel bad because your girlfriend have gotten married and you desire to get married. Like you are, you know, and you think you may think that you're missing out on something, but some of those women that flash those shut up rings, and you all know what I talk about, shut up rings. I'm talking about engagement rings, and some women don't never get married. They they flashing in front of social media, and then those that do get married, that don't mean, my brother and sister, believe it or not, my single sister, God does not put all couples together. I'm going to say that two more times. God does not put all couples together. God does not put all couples together. And you could tell this by two fruits that a customer, well, not a customer, but a couple produce. Like I said, God does not uh, put all men and women together. So that's why I'm telling you, sister, because you see, it, it appears, how you doing, mother? It appears like women are more will prefer to get married more so than men. And we're going to narrow it down to the United States of America. 
women have more of a desire to get married than men, okay, as of this present time. But I'm going to tell you, sister, just because you see a woman getting married, just because you see a woman flashing a ring in front of you, just because you see a ring, a woman flashing um, a ring on social media, just because the woman actually have a ceremony and it's a big quote unquote church wedding, that doesn't mean that God placed that man and woman together because they're going to be two different. They're going to be two types of fruit, my brother and my sister, that you could be able to tell. And the main fruit is they will ne they ne never gave or they did not ever give God credit. This is one fruit that can tell you that God did not put this man and woman together. The main one is they never gave or they do not never give God credit for bringing them together. That's one thing you got to look for, my brother and sister, because when you listen to a couple that have gotten married, and they and they just tell you the origin. If they just say we made on we met on blind date, we met on social media, we met and we just bumped up into each other and all that kind of stuff. If they don't give God credit, and when if and if they don't initially give God credit, and if they don't continue to give God credit, that tells you right there, my brother and sister, that God did not put those two people together. He didn't bring them together, and neither is he keeping them together. They will give you some crap like, uh, we got together because we had good communication. And I always say, my brother and sister, good communication does not keep a relationship together. God keep a good uh, a relationship together, and good communication, as I always say, that's just a byproduct of a relationship with God, Okay. So one thing, and most important you, what you brother and sister, especially you single sister, got to keep in mind, they don't allow God to work through their relationship to bring the laws to Christ. So the two main things, my brother and sister, when you could tell that God did not put the old two people together, and listen to what I'm saying, even though the couple could look real good on pictures and stuff together, they could look good. And some people could say they look just like a cute couple. They and they they just got the American dream. They could look real good. You could have a handsome man. You could have a beautiful woman. They could have all what this world possessed. But God don't put all the marriages together, my brother and sister. He does not. God only put a marriage together between a man and a woman that's falling after his will. You understand that? You got to be clear. Even if a man and woman go and uh, get licensed in some of these states, they, they put their name on the license, the world recognizes that they're married. The world recognizes because it's legal. But from a spiritual standpoint, God did not put that relationship together. As a matter of fact, the devil put relationships together. And when the devil put a and this is this is the critical thing, my brother, so that you all got to understand. The devil could put a nice looking man and a nice looking woman together. They could look like they got the glamorous life. You know what I mean? Because he gave them everything. And so what Satan does with this good looking man and this good looking woman, he uses them to bait other people into trying to model their life after these two people. You see, Satan got couples that he puts together as well as God put a uh, couple together. You see, when Satan put couple together, they they're never they're not really going to give God credit. That's the key thing you have to listen for, my brother. So the key thing is, do they um talk about God? If God brought us together. If you don't hear this, I'm telling you, if you don't hear this statement, God brought us together. If you don't hear this statement, God keep us together. If you don't hear those two statements, God, I'm here on record tonight to tell you that those two individuals, God did not put them together. It was a manufactured marriage or relationship. Even though they got they, they, they John Hancock down on a piece of paper at the courthouse, God did not put it together. Man put that relationship together. You understand it, my brother and sister? Because, like I said, if they don't give God credit and they don't continue to give God credit, 
And the final thing is, you see, when God put a man and woman mm -hmm. together, my brother and sister, you got to understand that when God put a man and woman together, it's bigger than their marriage. It represents the, the relationship between Christ and the church. But, uh, but the most important thing why God put a man and woman together is after they are supposed to be like a representation of Christ's relationship with the church, the biggest thing that man and woman has to do with their lifestyle, they have to bring lost people to Christ. This is a test, my brother and sister. If you know any married people, what and this this is gonna flaunt the test. And a lot of your a lot of your relatives, my brother and sisters, a lot of your friends, my brother and sister, if they fail the first part, if they don't give God credit and they don't continue to give God credit, they already have flaunt anyway. And the second thing, my brother and sister. What does that man and woman do with their marriage? Do their lifestyle and do they talk to other people about Christ? You understand? That's why God bring a man and a woman together to bring the laws to Christ. Not just because they're together. God put them together for his purpose, for his glory. So I'm telling you, if they don't have these two things, that's right, Cole. It, it is, uh, Sister uh, Cole Connie. It's bigger, my brother and sister. So I'm telling you, any man or any woman, I'm going to say this one more time. I ain't going to say it no more. I hope I don't. But if that man or woman does not give God the credit, if, they does, if this man or woman does not give God the glory, if that man or woman is not trying to bring people to Christ, that is a counterfeit relationship. It looks good. It's a counterfeit relationship. That man and that woman is is the uh, the epitome of the Walking Dead. And you all have seen the Walking Dead before, haven't you? It comes on TV. What is the Walking Dead? The, they're zombie lights, and they can move and all that kind of stuff. But they're dead. They're dead on the inside. But that's where the devil come in at Satan. He put two people together in front of you, brother and sister. And when you and you can see this a lot on social media, and not only on social media, but you can see it. Some 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 of you all know people like this. They like to project that they live in the good life or what they do. They want to show you, they want to show you that they want to show you material thing with a smile on their face. But a lot of them they be living paycheck to paycheck. Because they be trying to impress people that don't even like them anyway. You understand? So a lot of these people, they be fronting that they happy in their marriage. They be fronting in front of everyone. And they're together because of me, myself, and I. The man is with this woman for a particular reason. And it don't have nothing to do with God. And this woman is in a relationship with this man. And it doesn't have nothing to do with God. That's what Satan does, my brother and sister. Satan camouflaged himself as an angel of light. He's a counterfeit. So majority of the marriage that you see, my brother and sister, they are counterfeit because they don't they don't uh try to give God the glory and they don't they don't do nothing. Their main thing is about our family and that's it. They don't even think about other people as far as trying to uh, bring people to Christ. That's why God bring a man and woman together. When God bring a man and woman together, when he put Adam and Eve together, the original thing was to replenish the earth. Remember what I said earlier. He, he uh, let me see. He brought Adam and Eve together to, in Genesis 1, 28, Genesis 1, 28, Genesis 1, 28, he told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. That was his original plan. What is God's original plan for a man and woman today? Basically the same thing. If a man and woman are able to produce children, they're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. You understand? And if they're not able to, uh, other than that, God give them dominion over something. And what is that dominion? He give them spiritual dominion called it's Christ is in that man and woman. They have dominion over evil spirits. And they know what they're doing. 
They know that they're about they're fighting a spiritual battle, not a fleshly battle called man and woman that God put together and they'll find out to the Lord. Their warfare is nothing with this world. Their warfare collectively together is a spiritual warfare. A lot of people, men and women, don't understand this. It's bigger than their marriage. That's right, cause exactly. A lot of people over overshare on social media. Some use it for uh, therapy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my brother and sister. Now listen here. Three reasons why God gets some men good wife. It's very imperative, my brother and sister, that a man, brother, a man has to have the knowledge that God brought a particular or special woman fine to him not to use her, but to utilize her. Now, the Bible say when, when a man finds for wife, he finds for good thing and obtain favor from God, correct? But you see, some men, flesh-thinking men, they think uh, they got to go out there and hunt for a woman. That's not the strategy. The strategy is God going to bring that, that woman into that man. He's going to set up the situation where that man and woman meets. Even though from the physical part, it seemed like that man and woman were just living their natural life and they some kind of way, they met up some kind of way. How you doing, brother? They, they met up some kind of way, but it don't just happen. A good man and a good woman does not just happen. It's not luck. When God put a man and woman together, it, don't, it doesn't have nothing do, to do with luck. It does not have nothing to do with coincidence. When God placed a good man uh, in a position to find a good wife, you know how a man find a wife? To, to tell you the truth, God does all the work. God does all the work when a man find a woman. And this is how it is. Satan going to bring certain type of women in, in that man point of uh, view, and God going to bring a certain type of woman. In a man point of view. You see, Satan brain, if this one woman doesn't work, Satan's going to keep on bringing up women because Satan know what a man likes. Satan know that men go by the appearance first. He knows that. So Satan going to uh, step up his game over and over again. So Satan brings certain type of women in front of man. God going to bring a certain special, particular type of woman in front of a man. You understand it? Now, the three reasons. Number one, a man first and foremost must love God. This is a good man. And this is why God given this man this particular type of woman. First, this man, he and, for, and foremost, he must love God. Listen to what I say. He must love God through his son, Jesus. This, this ain't got nothing with this man loving himself. It doesn't have nothing with this man loving nobody else. It doesn't have nothing with this man loving thing. That man's first priority is love God. As it is written in Matthew 22, 37, Matthew 22, 37, Matthew 22, 37. And Jesus said this. This is what Jesus said. Jesus talking to everyone. And brother, you listen up because you're supposed to be the leader and head of the relationship. It states that love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. That's the first thing a man's supposed to do. He's supposed to love God with his heart, all of it. He's supposed to love God with his soul, all of it. And he's supposed to love God with his mind, all of it. He has to will for do all of this. You understand? Now, when a man loves God first, he sent himself up for number two. What is number two? The man has to have a desire for a good wife. That's the second thing a man has to do. After he loves God, he has to have a desire. You understand? He has to have desire. Let's go back to the garden of Adam and Eve. When God created everything, um, and when he, he created the earth and everything, you notice he made Adam, he created Adam right prior to Eve because Eve was God's last creation, okay? So he, he put man down. So man had everything except for a wife. 
God said it was not good for man to belong, right? But guess what? God knew that that desire was in Adam. You know why he knew it? Because just, just check this out. Just think about it, my brother and sister. God brought a male and a female animal in front of Adam, and he named all of them, right? Adam noticed a male monkey and a female monkey. He noticed a, a male cat, a female cat, a male elephant, a female elephant, a male whale, a male a male um male whale and a male female whale. Adam, Adam named all of the animals. Every animal that you know about or you don't know about because there are some animals right now in the ocean that scientists still discovered they didn't know what it was there. Adam named all of the animals and they were male and female. You understand? Male and female. But he didn't have one. But he had a desire and God knew he had a desire. Adam had a relationship with God first. Now, some people, and I have said it before, some people will say, all I need is Jesus and I don't need nobody else. And you all have heard that song before. All I need is King Jesus and I don't need nobody else. But the Lord himself, directly out of his word, said that it's not good for man to be alone. Adam had a perfect relationship with God. But God is the one that says it's not good for man to be alone. No man didn't say it. No woman didn't say it. Even though some men today that say they don't need no woman. And there are some women that say I don't need a man. But God says it's not good for man to be alone. Right? So, Adam, Adam had a desire. Remember what Adam, Adam is made from what? Spirit. He's made, well, for soul too, right? And a body. Adam made spirit soul, and body. When God brought, uh, breathed into Adam's uh, body, when he, he made it from the earth, right? The dust of the ground, right? When he blew into Adam's nostril, his nose, the Bible said that Adam became what? A living soul. Before that, Adam was not animated. He didn't have life. He had a soul. I mean, when God breathed into him, that's when Adam's soul woke up. And not only that, Adam had God's spirit in him. So Adam was walking around with God's spirit. He was walking around with his personal soul and a body. So God communicated with Adam on a spiritual level. You know what I mean? Spirit. But Adam need to identify with somebody just like him. This is where Eve came in at. Eve had a soul and Eve had a body. So when God created Eve, okay, Adam's first need was met. The spiritual part. He had a relationship with God. Adam's second thing, he had to relate to somebody else because he had a soul and he had a body. So when Eve came along, Eve had a soul and she had a body. So Adam was connected to the Lord through the spirit. And then he connected with Eve from the soul standpoint. Adam and Eve, mind was one. Adam and Eve, will was one. Adam and Eve, uh, emotions was one. And then the flesh part, the flesh part came to the physical part of their relationship. You understand? So that's why God created the woman for the man. And when God bring a good woman, it said a man has to have a desire for a good wife, not a bad wife. You see, when a man love God and he have a desire for a woman, how does a man have a desire for a woman? He knows it within himself. He know it by his mind. He know he willfully says within himself, I, I, I willfully want a wife, in my, a woman in my life that's going to be my wife. He's not looking for no girlfriend. He's not, he not looking for someone to uh, uh, just keep dating and dating for years and years and a day. He's not looking for no woman that's temporary. This man is thinking about, I need to be a wife. I mean, I need to be a husband and I need a wife. I need a woman. I need a woman to be my wife because I'm trying to do it God way. God way, when I look in Genesis, he created Adam and Eve. So I want to duplicate that. God had a purpose for Adam and Eve. So I want to duplicate Adam and, what Adam and Eve was supposed to have been doing. 
You understand that? So when God brings Eve into, I mean, a woman into to the picture for a man, that man already have his relationship with the Lord spiritually. Now God bring a woman into his uh for into the forefront of his uh, eyesight, right? So when God bring this woman in front of the man, the man, that's when the man find the woman. So there are some men, and I'm gonna get to that shortly. They don't let me read this part first. Psalms 37, verse 4 through 5. Psalm 37, 4 through 5. Psalm 37, 4 through 5. It said, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do it. Again, in Psalm 37, 4, 5, this go for everyone. But we're talking about a man. Take the light in the Lord. And when a man take the light in the Lord, what happens? And this is the byproduct of a man having the, uh, getting the light in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. But when God gives you the man desire of his heart, he's going to bring something in now that the, that's better than what the man wants for himself. And the man supposed to commit, it said, commit your ways to the Lord. So the man got to commit this desire to God. What did the man say? Lord, I need you to help me to hand pick a woman. The right woman. A good woman. I have tried it myself, Lord, but I failed. I tried to do it all by myself and I failed. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you pick her for me. I'm going to let you, Lord, pick an imperfect woman that's right for me. Because I'm imperfect, so she's going to get an imperfect man, but I'm right for her. You understand? So that's what, uh, that's how it is. So second, the first thing, it said three reasons why God gives some men good wife. He doesn't give all men good wife. Because some, like I said earlier, God does not put our marriage together. I'm talking about specifically the one that God brings together. The man love God first with his heart, his soul, and his mind. Secondly, the man have a desire because he he put his delight in the Lord. And let me tell you about that delight part again. It's going back to Psalm 37, 23. It said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. So if the Lord, if the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, what does that mean? That means that the man submit to the will of God because that man is following the spirit of the Lord. That man is following the spirit, not the flesh. That's what it means. So if that man following the spirit, remember Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. Jesus said that. Jesus said, my sheep. When Jesus said, my sheep, that's personal. Jesus said, my sheep. Let me, let me tell you something right quick, my brother and sister. That was this guy that I was listening to, a preacher, right? And he said that he had went to the Holy Land, right? And he said him and his friend, they were sitting in this marketplace. And he said that this shepherd came to the marketplace with a whole bunch of sheep following behind him, right? And he said it was already a man at the marketplace with his sheep, right? So he said the two men start talking, you know, they start conversating together, right? And he said that both of the men's sheep, they start mingling with, with one another, right? He said they start mingling. And then the man said, the priest said, he said, this was going to be interesting. I wanted to know how those sheep, how they were going to be able to tell whose sheep it was. The man that approached the marketplace, how he was going to know his sheep. And the man that was already there, how was he going to know his sheep? Because all the sheep, when they came together, they start um, mixing up together, right? And this is what the man said blew him away. He said when the two men stopped talking, he said that the man that had came into the marketplace, he started walking off. And he said this man made a certain sound, right? He said when this man made a certain sound, he said the sheep that he brought to the market, they stopped what they were doing, they followed him. 
Sheep got sense, my brother. So you understand that? The sheep, they were able to tell that man's voice by the sound he made. You see how that is? The same thing. The same thing. When a man and a woman is following the Lord, that man and woman can hear Jesus speaking consistently. Jesus speaks to a man and woman's spirit, and a man and woman can hear Jesus consistently. It, it happens often on during the day. That's why a lot of time I ask people, have you ever heard the Lord talk to you before? And that they they thinking they're supposed to hear something going into their ear. The Lord, sometimes he does it that way, but most of the time he talks to your spirit. And you see, when the Lord talks to your spirit, you can hear him on the inside. You can hear it because you got a conscience, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion. Then you can hear the Lord communicating with your soul. How you doing, brother? After Now, if you, my brother, or you, my sister, have not heard the voice of the Lord, you don't know what I'm talking about. Because if you follow the Lord, you will hear him. You might not hear him like I'm talking to you now, but it's a be an inward voice that you hear. You're going to hear one or two voices. You're going to hear Satan's voice or you're going to hear the Lord's voice. And let me tell you something. Let me give you another example. You are familiar with Samuel, right? I'm not getting off the topic. I'm just trying to show you something before I can get back to the third point. You all have heard of Samuel, right? And I'm not talking about Samuel L. Jackson. I'm talking about Samuel the prophet. Samuel, mother, wanted a child, right? Brother, uh, after said, I tell my wife, the Lord told me her name before we ever met. Amen, brother. Samuel's mother was barren. What does barren mean? She would, could not conceive. She could not have a child. So she was praying. And she was moving her mouth, but she was praying to God to give her a child. But this, this prophet seen her talking. And when the prophet seen her talking, he thought that she was drunk, but she was not drunk. She was talking to the Lord. The Lord heard her voice, right? And when the Lord heard her voice, she she could see, she could see, because what she said was, she told the Lord, if you give me a child, I'm going to turn him back over to you. That's right. I'm going to turn her, him back over to you. So when she conceived, she brought, after a few years when the baby, when the little boy was a baby, she turned around and brought the uh, the baby to be with this prophet, right? So Samuel grew up with this prophet. And the prophet had two sons that was, uh, they was very crooked sons. And this particular prophet did not correct his sons, right? So young Samuel was asleep one night and his prophet was asleep too. So Samuel heard the voice saying, Samuel, and he woke up and he went into this room where the prophet was and he said, I'm here. And then he said, you, then the man said, what, why are you here? He said, you called me. He said, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. So Samuel went and got back in his bed and he heard a voice said, Samuel, and Samuel woke up again and he went right back into that prophet's uh, bedroom and he said, I'm here. And the man said, he, he said, look, I did not call you. He said, go back to bed. So Samuel went and got back in the bed. He heard another, the voice said, Samuel. And he got up out of his bed. It's the third time. You see, three is a, three is a key number, my brother and sister. Three, that number, father, son, spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, right? So the third time he went in there, right? And he said, he said, look, I heard you call my name. And at that particular time, the prophet said, he, he knew then, he said, oh, God calling him. He said, what you need to do, go back in your room. And when you hear that voice call your name, just say, I'm here. So Samuel went back to bed and he heard the voice say, Samuel, he said, speak to me, Lord. And the Lord told him, look, you're going to take over. You're going to be my head prophet, right? 
but the prophet that you are under, he got to go. Cause he 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 got some songs out there running loose and he won't control them. So Samuel told the prophet most of what the Lord told him, but he didn't tell him all of it. So eventually that prophet two songs died and he died. So that's Samuel. So why am I telling you that? Samuel heard the voice of the Lord. Every God, every man based in the Bible that follow the Lord, they hear his voice. They might not see him. And I'm going to tell you another thing too. Saul that became Paul. Saul, when he was not, when, when Paul's name was Saul, he persecuted the, the Christians, right? So he was on his road, the road to Damascus. And you all have heard of this terminology, blinded by the light, right? While he was on his way to prosecute some Christian in Damascus, um, uh, at noonday, and you know the noonday sun be right up, right up over your head, and it be hot, right? So, the particular light that came down from heaven, it was brighter than the noonday sun. Uh, Paul, during that time, his name was Saul. He got knocked off his horse, and the other men, they got. They was in that situation. They they heard they heard Jesus' voice, but they didn't see him. Paul seen Jesus, and he heard his voice. Cause when Paul, uh, when uh, the Lord said, "Saul, Saul, why does thou persecute me?" and then what did Jesus mean? Because Saul was making things hard for the Christian. That's why Jesus said, "Why are you per you are uh, persecuting me? It's hard to, to kick against a prick." But you see, the key thing is. Saul seen Jesus and he heard the voice, but the men around him, they heard Jesus' voice, but they didn't see him. You see? So what am, what am I saying? I'm getting back to the voice part. Brothers, 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 brothers. When God bring the right woman to you, you know how you're going to find her. This is how you're going to find the right woman. When you find the right woman, you're going to hear God's voice. I didn't say he's going to bring a perfect woman. He's going to bring the right woman. Just like Brother Arthur said, he said, I tell, I tell my wife, the Lord told me her name. You see, when I met my wife, I knew it just like that. I knew it just like that. When I met her. Instantly. That's why I tell you, brothers and sisters, I have said this all the time. It doesn't take a man a long period of time to know. We know. I don't care about, sister, I don't care about a man saying, look, we need to get together. We need to, we need to take our time and all that. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. You ain't got to do all this stuff. Because the Lord going to let a man know. A man going to know, he going to know, he going to know. It ain't no guessing, it's not no surprise, and not no coincidence. When a man meet the right woman, not a, a sinless woman, because he's not he's not uh, without sin, but he's he's a righteous man and she's a righteous woman. And uh, how the man find the woman? God put the woman right in the man's face. Boom. And how does he do it? He does it through life experiences. You could be shopping, you could be at a game, you could be at a track, anywhere when God set up the circumstance. You see, most of the time when a man and woman meet, they're not looking for, they're not just going, they're not, don't, they don't just like one day get up and say, the man don't just get up one day out of bed and say, I'm going to go look for a wife. Or the woman don't just sit up one day and say, I'm going to go look for a husband. It doesn't happen like that. The, you can put yourself in a position to look, to put yourself, you know, to try to meet someone. But when God is in it, God going to create a, God going to use that man life circumstance. And he going to use that woman life circumstance to bring together. And at that particular time, when God bring that woman into that man point of view, that man, he's going to, that's when he find her. How does a man find a woman? God say that she is. That's how it go. God says, she the one. I'm going to give you another situation when God handpicked. How you doing, Sister Mona? If you all remember, King Saul, the first king of Israel, right? 
he rebelled against God. God sent Samuel to Jesse's house, David, that was going to be the second king of Israel, right? God sent Samuel to Jesse's house. So Samuel started at Jesse's first song. And he went through all of Jesse's song. And what did God tell Samuel? I don't want him. 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 So Samuel thought that uh, that was it. Okay, Lord, you keep telling me you don't want this song, this song, this song. I don't see no more. And then Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any more songs? And then he said, yeah, I got David. And he out there with the sheep. He's a Rudy fella. And uh, Rudy, R-U-D-D-Y, he had freckles and stuff, okay? He was out there tending the sheep. Check out what David was doing. He was tending the sheep. What the, Who wrote the 23rd song? David. He used... He used his experience when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. Remember when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for what? His name's sake. And you know, on and on and on. So, God chose someone that paralleled Christ. Because we you know Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, right? You get that? So, when David came in front of Samuel, they got they called him from the field. That's when God told Samuel, that's him. That's who I'm choosing. I'm handpicking him. That's what God basically told Samuel. I'm handpicking him. Then God said, Man look on the outside, but I look on the inside. That's what God said. Men look at on the outside. I look on the inside. Worldly men look at women from the outside. They don't really too much think about her soul, which is how she think and how she feel. Or they think about she, how she feel, but they don't they don't look at the lady, they don't try to uh look at the lady whole soul from a, you know the, the standpoint of whether we're gonna be soulmates. You understand? So a woman has uh, uh her soul, her mind, her will, or, and her emotions, right? I know this could be deep. For a word of person that might be looking at me, there's some deep stuff, okay? But when a man see the fact, when a man find the right woman, he gonna he might see her outside beauty, but he's gonna see something other than her outside beauty. He's gonna use what God gave him, his discernment, and he's gonna be able to tell something about that woman on the inside, which is her character, her soul, the real woman. That's how a man of God find a woman. He don't find a woman based on how she looked. He found a woman based on whether she had the spirit of God in her that are living inside that woman with a soul that is in submission to God. For a woman to submit to a man, the Lord's spirit got to be in her. You understand? She have to be a prepared wife. So when a man finds a wife, God doing all the lead work to tell you the truth. God doing all the lead work because he basically put the woman in front of the man and said, here she is. So a man can see a whole bunch of women and they're not the one. A classic point, uh, Queen Esther. Queen Esther was uh, marching in front of the king. You are familiar with Queen Esther in the Bible? She was uh, a mar she was in the big brutal pageant, right? But that the king he decided to get our uh, queen Esther. She had the spirit of the Lord in her life. Why did Boaz choose Ruth? She had the spirit of the Lord in her life. Why did Joseph choose Mary? She had the spirit of the Lord in her life. Why did uh, Samson fail? Delilah had the devil in her life. Why did King Solomon, the wise man to live, why did he fail? He messed with a thousand devil women. All of them. All 1,000, not one right. The Bible didn't the Bible is say not. Solomon had a thousand women and not one of them followed God. Can you imagine that? 
a thousand. Seven hundred wives, three hundred concubine princes. Out of one thousand women, he could not find one right. Not one. You know why? Because he didn't let God do it. He didn't let God bring the right woman into his point of view. He went by worldly, worldly wisdom. Going back to know, okay, like I said, three reasons why God gives some men good wives. Yeah, contention. That's right, brother. Uh, three reasons. The man must first love God with all his, his mind, his, his soul, with all his heart, his soul, and his mind. Then second, a man have to have a desire because the Bible said that in Psalm 37, 4 through 5, he takes the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the final part, that man must know this part. He must clearly know this part. In 1 Corinthians 11, 9, 1 Corinthians 11, 9, 1 Corinthians 11, 9, it say, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman was created for the man. This clearly means that the woman and I must live our lives together, not for our purpose, but for God will and purpose. You understand? These are the three reasons. The man loved the Lord. The man have a desire for the right woman. The Lord bring the right woman in front of the man. And he find her then. The Lord doing all the leg work. And then the third thing, he understand that that woman was created for him, not him for her. And when he look at that lady, he said, hey, we could work it. We could do this thing together. We could serve God together and we could try to help win people to Christ. It's not that we're trying to get together for business reasons so we could build our wealth. We're not getting together for our personal gain, even though the Lord will bless you with personal gain. But that's not the main focus of a man getting a wife. It's about, look, I'm following the Lord and I need you to help me. I need you to help me to win people to Christ. That is the main reason why God gives some men good wives. And other than that, he doesn't. Because this man and woman, their, their first love is God. Their second love is one another. Nobody else but each other. And after that, they are together to serve God and keep his commandment. For that is the whole duty of man and woman, according to the last part of Ecclesiastes. Brother Arthur said, under the protection of the Most High, to give God the glory and raise more Christian children and generation. Amen, brother. And with that said, my brother and sister, I'm telling you, God does not put our relationships together. That he doesn't. God only put a relationship together between a man and woman that's following his will and make yourself available to carry out his purpose. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister, for being a part of the broadcast. I love you. I love you. Peace out. Have a good night.